the answer to this might be a no, but I'm curious with the therapist who is like not really there. Do you think that that actual human played a role in her life prior and that's why she visualizes her that way? Oh, that's a great thought and question. I hope so because the actress was wonderful who played her. She was wonderful. She comes from a theatre background and she's uh, she's Canadian and, God, she was great to work with. And I hope that's something. I hope she comes back. Maybe she, yeah, maybe she was a therapist at her institution, you know, and that's what I'm she's realizing. Yeah, and maybe she was so... Um, so in Lottie's life coming through the, those earlier days. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought of that. That's a great thought. That's that's like an obsessive's job who pours over every frame too much. This next question can can reflect that a little too. So when she leaves that session, she goes back to the group and she tells everybody, I think you should all go home. Why, why do you think she doesn't immediately go back to them and embrace the idea of needing to do another hunt? What gives her hesitation then, but not like mere moments later? Right. Um, I think the understanding was they all need to go because something bad's about to happen. Something really bad is about to happen. But she, she does say, but seeing them and being here, I feel it in my body and it feels wonderful you know it feels like this family has come back to her so it's that that you know the tug and that the, she really wants to embrace the sisterhood that's there and she's always on her own Lottie she's always apart from everybody else you know so she she feels this beautiful connection to these women but something is terrifying her because she knows something awful is about to happen and so when she comes in the first thing is like it, it would be it'd be like go the house is on fire. Go. I can't, I can't mentally have you all here because I will, I'm, something's about to happen, but she doesn't know how to say that. And then, um, and there, and Natalie's like, come on, kind of, you know, and so we've already heard that she loves having them here in a way. Um, and so then she just kind of, yeah, gets drunk with them, which I think is really fun. The house being on fire was a good descriptor right there. Right, the house is on fire. <laughs> the cabin. Your answer there was just making me think of a question I had asked somebody else. But at the end of season two, who do you think Lottie trusts the most of all of the surviving Yellow Jackets? Oh, I think without a doubt, Van. You know, I think I think that connection with Van because when she's in the she's in the cabin on the sharing shack at the end of eight and she's just like, all of you have done horrendous things. You're all, you know, you've had a lover and you're, you know, you almost killed your wife to Thaisa and, and Mr. You did actually kill somebody. And, and Natalie, you tried to kill yourself. And Van, the only thing with Van is she says, this light has gone off in you and she knows something's wrong and she can sense that and see that. And Van sort of put it on the spot, but that's a connection. You know, I mean, if you, we're with a friend and they're like, what's up? Something's up. What's going on? You know, and and then Van is the one who really sticks up for her. And she's like, she's like this because of us. Um, and then right at the end, the line is delivered to her. It's all going to be okay. You'll see, you know. And so that's a really lovely connection. Um, who knows what's happened between it with them prior? I don't know. Um, I don't know, but I do know that the van is the only one who's really got her back and is really supporting Lottie and can see her mental health. And Van's been in a video shop for the past 20 years and living her world in very, very private, you know, and so I think there's something to be said about that as well. You feel that connection because you bring up that circle scene. This is another thing I was wondering. So Lottie goes goes around and she tells them all something they've either like done wrong or something something negative that's been happening to them. If she also gave an answer for herself in that moment, what do you think she would say? Wow, I think maybe that was in my notes when I was prepping that scene. Like, what if I shot? If I held the mirror up to myself, what would it be? Um, and I think for Lottie, it's the fact that. She can't, she's out, she's not in, in touch. She hasn't done her own work. She's great at, they say a lot of psychiatrists are amazing at giving out, you know, advice and everything, but behind closed doors, they're a hot mess. And so I think for, for Lottie, she still wears the trauma of what happened with Travis, right? Remember that little incident? She had a vision. <laughs> and the button just happened to break. Oh, you know, like, 
Well, she knows that the vision she has is so overwhelming that, you know, but it's it's a schizophrenia of sorts and it's a, a duality of personalities and she can't control her vision. So in a way she's like, I need help too. I need to understand what's happening for me. But she doesn't kill people. Do you think that she carries around guilt over what happened to Travis or is she quicker to blame the wilderness influence there and write it off as, as something that she didn't directly do? Yeah, it's really interesting because in that episode, we did so many different versions of that. I know you guys do that. <laughs> yeah, and I did a bit, many different sort of versions of like hand on heart. I had nothing to do with it. And, and then I remember um, Juliet's Natalie says, what, come on, the button broke kind of thing. And she's like, I swear, I, it, it wasn't me or something like that. And you're like, mm, was it? Because I don't think she knows. I don't think Lottie knows a lot of the time because she's in a different state. Just like she's in a state right at the end of the season finale when she's there and she's like, you know, grazed in the arm and, and she's looking at them going, this is she's not present. So she's, yeah, she's in a different world at that stage. I feel like I've asked someone this before, but I, I think this question can apply to literally all of your characters. When, when you're playing someone who is in that state and, you know, also how different she is at the beginning of the season versus the end, do you need to pinpoint a specific anchor for her, something to base all of her decisions in some sort of consistent truth? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I think of it like that. I think... I think because she's constantly changing. I think Lottie is constantly just, you know, she's just moving in the wind, the wilderness or something. I, I can't anchor it to one specific thing. And also I don't know with the writers, you can't be too stuck on one specific thing because they might then suddenly do a flashback of something that's happened to your character and you're like, oh, well, that completely changes that choice. So you have to be very careful in being really like stuck on one's kind of Anchor. Everyone's ability to make their characters feel all over the place, but also so cohesive at the same time, and all of their actions make some sort of sense. I I don't understand how you all do it. I know, I know. I'm watch when I watched it because I watched it in real time with everybody, um, other than the things I'd seen on in ADR, and um, just seeing even Melanie how she she kind of grapples with what's going. You know, it's so beautifully done, and and she does it in a way where she's like. I just, you know, and then she bursts into tears or she just has a little panic attack and it's it's really well done. Her little nuances are some of my favorite things in the show. Like there's so many like reactions and just like line deliveries that she gives that I would think to myself, if I read it on the page, I never would have heard it that way. That is like your way and your way alone. Yeah. And she really did that wonderfully in the in the sharing shack when they're talking about everything and and, and they're all accusing each other. And Van and Lottie are just sitting there like, what has gone on with you three, you four? You know, like, what is going on? Um, yeah, but Melanie does that. She does it so well. As does Christina and and Tawny. They, we've all have found our own little vices of how we can kind of flash quickly to our past and then pull it back within the character. Can I get as specific to ask if it's a specific, like, tool or technique or, like, one consistent idea that you use to do that? Yeah, I think... For me personally, I just kind of, I find a way, I find something that in my own personal life that if you, if you kept asking me, I'd burst into tears or I'd walk out of the room. I find something that's still on the surface for me as Simone. And then I tap it ever so slightly. Mm. And then I, it, it gives me a layer and it, it makes me like, I can feel it. And then I, I, I drop it. It's another thing that impresses me about about someone who who does a craft like this the the willingness and ability to do that but also you know practice self-care in, in the process and know when and how to pull yourself out of it yeah and in fact after that whole the travis scenes you know when he's hanging and she's i mean they they cut it very quickly because it's a flashback that she's telling then natalie lonnie's telling natalie and when he's hanging and the, the night we did that was a very very long night filming and we were in a barn and it was freezing and the stunt he was hanging there literally literally <laughs> he was hanging there in the back of my shot and then i turn and i just see the feet and i see that and we're there it really had to to go to some very painful things for myself and that's where i go to so it's you know 
And the week after I got so sick, <laughs> I got myself so run down because I was so traumatized. And like a month earlier, my dog had died as well. Oh God. And, and I've been so busy getting prepped for Lottie and moving to Vancouver oh, and everything that I think everything just sort of overcame me. And then my grief for this Lottie's for, for Travis and what had happened and my, and my, my yearning and loss of my dog. <laughs> Shauna eventually says to you, you know, there's no it, right? It was just us. And then Lottie replies, is there a difference? So in that moment, if she was asked to define what it was, how might she describe it? That's such a hard question because I know. so many. I can't answer it. That's why I posted to you. <laughs> That's why you're asking me. Damn. Um, I wish I knew. I feel that it is there a difference? It, you know, there's no it. There is an it. The it is what happened to them. The it is, because all they're all in denial. I don't know if you've noticed, but everyone's like, you know, and at the beginning, Lottie was like, it isn't real. It never happened kind of thing, right? And they're all in this weird denial. It is what happened and the eating of their friends. I think you are right. I think the it is what happened. And I don't think anything that happened in the 90s timeline was supernatural. It was just like uncontrollable human responses to a wild situation. Absolutely. And that we ate Jackie and that we ate Harvey. And who else are we going to eat? I know. You know, I so know. that is it. And nobody ever talks about that. There's no mention of it in the present day characters of the cannibalism. So that's what it is, and it's a combination of that. I don't think it's a supernatural thing. I don't know. Maybe the writers are thinking, of course, it's a supernatural thing. But I, I, I can't. I don't. I didn't play it like that. I think I played the the idea of it is what we did in order to survive, and that's what's happening right now. Another big burning question for you, because I, I just didn't expect. Uh, I was talking to Christine. I didn't expect her to say this particular thing with such like clarity and authority. Do you think Lottie believes that she was ever the first antler queen? I think so. I think so, yeah. I mean, even to this day, I'm a bit confused about the antler queen. <laughs> when Christina said that to me, I was asking her why Misty it. has such a strong connection with Natalie. And she goes, like, like it was a matter of fact, like, oh, it's because she's the first antler queen. Like, what about Lottie? Yeah, really? See, I don't know that. I thought, I think it's all handed to them all. That's I don't know if it's not the first or the second or the third. I feel that Lottie and her connection to the wilderness and her spirituality connect, created this, this ultimate kind of antler queen. And then as the strength moves through the group, whoever is in the position of leading these women takes on the role as the antler queen. So it could have gone through then Taysa, it could have then gone to Van, and maybe it does throughout. But yeah, I think Lottie maybe created the Antler Queen as such. And that's what why all the women started to like follow what she said and give sacrifices and, and sit holding hands outside and give gratitude to the wilderness. I think, yeah. In my head canon, Lottie is number one and then Natalie is the second Antler Queen. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> <laughs>